welcome to this episode of Out of Country. Out of Country is a series that I host where I get to sit down one-on-one -on -one and talk to ordinary people who have done extraordinary projects, volunteer work and philanthropic work in other countries. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing Petrina Shell. Welcome Petrina. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving us time because I know how busy you are. Now before we start I do have to say I really wanted to interview Petrina because we first met just over two years ago mm -hmm. at a CAPS uh, meeting here in Calgary, the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers, Calgary chapter. Petrina drove all the way down from Alaska I believe. Northwest Territories. Sorry, Northwest Territories for that first meeting but doesn't end there because we both enrolled in the CAPS Fast Track program uh, a six-month fast-track program that they put on once a month every uh, on a Saturday and also we were in the same group of four of that fast-track so I got to know Petrina a little bit more about her journey so I think the journey that I wanted to talk about was probably the most recent one you did was back in January of this year mm -hmm. January 2019 tell us about that one. Um, so I went with it's called you go travel for change and it's a Canadian organization and it's about giving back and then also pushing your boundaries. So it's a personal development trip. And we went over to Tanzania and we partnered with the Dare Women's Foundation to help build a perimeter wall on a piece of land that the foundation had donated to them. Okay. So how many of there were you that, did, did you meet others along the way that, or did you go with some from here in Calgary? So we all met up there in Tanzania. So okay. everyone flew separately. And there was about 12 of us in the group. Nice. And, yeah. So Tanzania became the center of the universe yeah. at that time. Great. Yeah. Okay. And the Dare Women's Foundation, uh, I went on their website briefly. They have only been around for a few years. Yep. Yep. They're, they've been around, I think, a little longer than a few years, but officially a few years. Um, and this amazing woman, uh, woman Maggie, she, she started it. Okay. Yeah, and it's to help um, women who've come out of abuse or illness, you know, just coming out of um, horrific pasts that they need to rebuild their lives. So she okay. helps women, and not only women, but it's primarily for women, but she'll help virtually anyone, but people who need to rebuild their lives so they can sustain themselves. Oh, I see. Okay. And also, I think I saw in there, it, it helps the women to become entrepreneurs. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Nice, so she nice. likes women to be able to start their own business, start their own business and yeah, sustain the, themselves. Great. So their there's life. a bit of leadership in there as well. Yeah. And um, they had a chunk of land donated to them, mm -hmm. and the project you went on was to help build a wall that will form the perimeter. Yes. Right. Okay. Because yeah. um, next year in 2020, they're going to start building a house, so it'll be a house where women can go that need to like rebuild their lives and stuff and heal and things like this so it'll be a home for that nice yeah. and you go will be going back for that okay so i intend on joining them back next year yes yeah nice okay maybe that's another one we'll be following them with everyone that's watching <laughs> that's great after that that uh, project um on your fundraising website you also uh to finish it off because this whole trip was about pushing your own personal boundaries mm -hmm. you did a hike up to mount kilimanjaro which is also in tanzania yes. tell us about that yeah well um, summiting mount kilimanjaro was one of the hardest things i've ever done in my life and one of the most life-changing things i've ever done also i never thought that hiking a mountain would be as transformational as that was Okay. But the whole journey of the mountain, it's physical, it's mental, it's spiritual, it's so many things. And just definitely so much different than I ever would have expected. Wow. Yes, I was watching some of your, uh, your video log on your YouTube. And uh, for everyone at home, uh, at the end you'll tell them where exactly they can go to watch that. It was nice because you were able to actually, while you're hiking up and in the middle of everything, you were able to sort of uh, share what it feels like your challenges and also your triumphs because all of you did make it up so it was pretty well everybody that was on the dare project that joined you yeah. and uh and as well you had a, a fundraiser right with a flag tell us about that mm -hmm. um yeah i was raising money to go on the trip so i came up with the idea to get a canadian flag and then people who sponsored me could write their name on the flag and i carried the flag with me up kilimanjaro and then when i finished i did a draw for the flag 
Okay. Of one of the names on the flag. Good. <laughs> well, I know I didn't get it, but I'm glad somebody <laughs> did because that was a real keepsake. There's a picture of it on your on your Facebook site because while you were doing this uh, this hike and project back in January, I think for about uh, was it about five weeks you had quite had quite regular updates on your Facebook yeah. uh, posts. So that was nice to see and read about. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. making magic happen. Okay. As you have to do sometimes in life. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, so everybody that was on the, the project with you did the hike, plus some extra people came on board. Uh, for the hike, it was everyone from the project. Okay. So it was just us, and we had the guides and the porters and things like that. So um, you never go up alone. But okay. it was just our group was the group that went up. Nice. And there's obviously lots of other groups that were not with us. So the whole thing, I guess, I go back a bit. I should have asked this the very first question is, how did you how did you come across this uh, this project, the Dare Women's Foundation? What inspired you to do that? Was that your first, or you probably? I think you did another. You did a previous uh, trip across Africa, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I okay. went. Um, I traveled from South Africa to Egypt, and I took local buses the whole way, and I did it alone. So it took me just over a year to cross the continent. So this was like a return return was, trip for you. Yeah. Or return home. I mean this return home. I mean this that was so. the third time now I've been to Africa and it had been quite a few years, it's been eight years since I had been there, so it was very nice to go back. Wow. Good to catch up with. Yes, definitely. Good. And uh, and I was definitely creating some volunteer work because Prior to that, I used to lead volunteer projects in the jungles of Central and South America. Yes. And that was a big part of my life. And it had been quite some time since I had gotten to get out there and be in rural communities and really give back and work alongside the mm. community members and the women. So this was really amazing for me to get back out there and really give back and immerse myself in the culture. Do you keep in touch with some of the people that you met on this project? Yes. Do you still keep in touch with them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, everyone became very close. Good. Especially after doing something like Kilimanjaro together. I guess so, <laughs> yeah. Pushing your limits, you find out what you can really yeah. uh, do and test yourself at. And also it's nice for uh, to fundraise with such a charity because it's a grassroots charity, mm -hmm. uh, Dare Women's Foundation, that just uh, started up recently, mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago. So that's great. Yeah. And, well, and the best thing about Yugo, who I went with, they do amazing projects like this all around the world. So they don't just go to Africa. They have an upcoming trip to Costa Rica, but all of their trips are about giving back and going places with purpose. I see. Great. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to, uh, if our viewers want to follow up with the trip, what's the best way? What's the best way that they can follow you? Your, do you have a, a website or a Facebook site? I do. I have all of them, but I would think if you really want to see the trip, then go to my YouTube channel and that's just Pitrina Shell. Okay. And all my videos from Summit in Kilimanjaro and the whole journey all the way in the volunteer project, everything's there. So they just go on to YouTube, search for uh, Petrina Shell. I'll have notes at the end of the video uh, spelling it out so uh, everybody can find it and follow you. I'm always uh, inspired to ask people um, how they come across these projects that they do because sometimes they're epiphanies that just happen. Sometimes they're lifelong uh, aspirations that maybe you have had. But obviously you said you traveled across Africa for a whole year and this was like coming back. And I just stumbled across Yugo. I was craving to go back to Africa for quite some time. I knew I really wanted to go to Africa. Yes. And Kilimanjaro had always been on my radar. Um, when I crossed Africa, sometimes living off a dollar a day, you know, I couldn't afford to go hike Kilimanjaro then. So this was like a long time coming. And I was just happened to be like researching different volunteer projects around the world and Yugo popped up and they literally covered all the bases I was looking for, volunteer work plus Kilimanjaro was part of it. And so it was giving back and pushing my boundaries. So I was like, this sounds exactly like what I'm looking for. And it turned out to be wow. even better than what I it imagined. It just, just fell into your lap. Well, of course yeah. you had the initiative. You just need that little that that little trigger yeah that uh that just comes up that uh that opportunity so yeah well that's so great congratulations on doing it i'm already looking forward to watching you on your next uh trip uh next year 2020 2020 yeah back to uh tanzania i had to look it up if africa isn't far enough <laughs> from here from us in western canada Tanzania is on the east side of Africa yet, so yeah. great. Okay, thank you, Katrina, and thank you to all of you for joining us on Out of Country, and stay tuned for the next episode of Out of Country.